the world more peaceful since the revolution. It is a shame that your people suffered. But bounty hunting is a complicated profession. They said you were coming. They said you were the best in the Parsec. Would you agree? Mandalorian, look outside. They are waiting for you. Yeah? Good. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We have a new trailer for Star Wars The Mandalorian that's premiering in a couple weeks on Disney+, Plus. so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, and I will be doing episode videos for it, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. We'll do a Disney Plus giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite moment from the trailer on the video. They change up the beginning of the trailer a little bit with that Werner Herzog voiceover as he's walking past the helmets of the stormtroopers, talking about the state of the galaxy. Are things different now? Are they better? Are they worse since the rebellion? There were some news outlets reporting that the first episode would begin with a big spoiler, and I'm assuming that it just has something to do with the state of the galaxy. Because most people have seen the Star Wars films, they understand that this is supposed to take place after Return of the Jedi by about five years. The whole idea is that things are in complete chaos, like he says, are things more peaceful? No, they are definitely not more peaceful. Things are very gray, it's actually hard to make a living now, because everybody's scrambling for power. The Imperials that are left over that didn't go to the Unknown Regions to join the First Order, the Rebellion hasn't become the New Republic yet, and even then when they did become the New Republic, it sounds like based on what happened during the new Star Wars films, that the entire galaxy didn't come along for the ride. You see the Transdotians riding on those creatures. They're not dewbacks, but they look similar to dewbacks. Then they throw down. He's using the stun baton. He has that giant blaster rifle you get a much better look at, which is meant to be the blaster rifle that Boba Fett used in the original Star Wars Christmas special when he debuted for the first time. That was the first appearance of the Boba Fett character. So they're going for some super deep cut Star Wars Easter eggs. You notice, though, that he's actually wearing much more worn-down-looking armor than he is later in the trailer. He puts them into carbonite, giving you a giant Empire Strikes Back flashback to Boba Fett and Han Solo in Cloud City. This ship of his is called the Razor Crest. We got a shot of it from the inside a little while ago, but it's just a repurposed freighter that he's used after the Battle of Endor. There's a whole lot of cantina shots in here. This is just the place where a lot of the bounty hunters congregate, where he meets with Grief Karga, who's the administrator or the leader of their bounty hunters guild, where he gets most of his jobs from. It's the same area that we've been to before in the earlier trailers, just a lot of different shots with a lot of other different characters that we didn't see before, just because of the way the camera was turned. He talks about the Mandalorian being the best in the Parsec. Parsec is a unit of distance. That's also meant to be a joke about the Millennium Falcon line from Han Solo in the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope. Chewie here tells me you're looking for passage to the Alderaan system. Yes, indeed. If it's a fast ship. Fast ship? You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We can make the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs, but parsecs are a unit of distance. But then it jumps to this shot here, and you notice that his armor is all shiny looking like he's upgraded it with new Beskar. Beskar is the special metal that Mandalorians use to upgrade their armor. It's an incredibly strong, incredibly rare, incredibly expensive metal alloy. So it's a really big deal that Werner Herzog's character is offering that as payment for the bounty that he hires him for. Which is a pretty good clue that Werner Herzog's character is kind of sinister, that he's willing to throw this around in the way that he's talking to him. Things are complicated, but here's a ton of money to go pick up this quarry that I'm looking for. 
which you see is this young child. They finally reveal. The whole idea was is that it was probably going to be a little girl, very much in the tone of a spaghetti western where you have this really evil landowner type figure going after some really innocent people. You have the gunslinger character like the Clint Eastwood or now the Mandalorian character that's kind of caught in between them and has to choose whether or not to do the right thing or do the thing that's going to get him paid. Really cool giant battle droids in the background here. There's a couple really big action shots that we've seen so far where the Mandalorian starts throwing down with a bunch of other bounty hunters. So this might be after the other bounty hunters come after him after he's turned on his bounty and starts to protect the little kid. This is just a much longer version of that badass takedown that we saw in the last trailer where he pulls in through the circular door but closes it while he's being pulled through so it ends up chopping him in half. Doing a little cattle rustling in the mud, then we see another one of his bounty hunter companions, who's another one of the companions that he has traveling with him, just like IG-11, played by Taika Waititi. The shot of him riding across the horizon in the desert and then standing across the horizon line is just meant to be a very spaghetti western type of shot, where you see the hero standing against the horizon. This is Grief Karga and a couple of the other bounty hunters. It's not really clear what his relationship is going to be with the Gina Carano bounty hunter character. Her name is Cara Dune. She's just a former rebel shock trooper who doesn't really know how to adapt to civilian life. So she'd become a bounty hunter just like the rest of them. But there's been a bunch of shots of them working together. I don't know if there's going to be any kind of romance between the two of them, but they'll be working together across the first season. And she is coming back for season two. They've already started filming season two of this right now. She posted this early production picture to her Instagram page. You all remember Gus Fring from Breaking Bad? He's playing an Imperial Moth who's sort of scrambling in the power vacuum left by the defeat of the Empire. And remember, this is after most of the Imperial remnants, after the Battle of Endor, went to the Battle of Jakku. There was a big civil war between the Imperials that were left over, and the survivors went off into the Unknown Regions to create the First Order. So he's one of the Imperial Moths that was in charge of this current sector where a lot of the show takes place, who's scrambling to try and retain power in the vacuum that's left. That's why you see a lot of these black Death Trooper Rogue One characters around him. Then later in the trailer, there's that really badass shot of him flying the Imperial TIE Fighter with the Mandalorian trying to use his grappling hook to hang on to it mid-air. The way he explains his character is exactly the way that you would expect him to, the way he would describe Gus Fring. Like, oh, he's not an evil person. He has a sense of order. He wants things to work like a well-oiled machine. But the links that he goes to to accomplish that are just really, really terrible. So he comes off as more of a villain. More shots of IG-11. Taika Waititi said they're using the character for a lot of the comedic relief because he's doing all these WTF takedowns. He's amazing with weapons because he's programmed that way, but he has this childlike innocence to him. So he doesn't really understand the context of what he's doing all the time. There's no real sense of morality to him. It's unclear who this character is, but she might be connected to the little kid that he's trying to protect from Werner Herzog. But then you finally see Bill Burr's new bounty hunter character. I knew that he was in here, but we hadn't seen any footage of him yet. Love the way they end the trailer with that bit of a throwdown line like Werner Herzog is telling him they're waiting for you out there. Yeah, good. One of the scenes that they showed off at Star Wars Celebration earlier this year that has not made it online yet is him throwing down with these stormtroopers in this room here where he walks in and they have their gunslinger standoff moment. He's such a badass that the stormtroopers basically tell him it's four to one. There's no way you can win. And he says, I like those odds as if there's no way that they can beat him. So what's happening, obviously, is that these episodes will air weekly. It's mostly a Friday show, but when it premieres on November 12th, that'll be a Tuesday. So this is the actual full schedule of all eight episodes. You notice that once they get to episodes seven and eight, they change the date just a little bit because they don't want to conflict with the release of Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker. I will be doing all the episode videos, so I'll just remind people about the schedule changes when we get to those episodes, so no worries. They said that they have Easter eggs for all kinds of Star Wars properties. Dave Filoni even teased that there would be characters from the Clone Wars that they would bring into the live action shows. And even though Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi is dead when this series takes place, he's already passed away and he's become a force ghost. The Disney Plus Star Wars Obi-Wan series will start shooting next summer. There'll be six episodes, so it'll be more on par with the Avengers Disney Plus shows that Kevin Feige told us about. Because they're already shooting Mandalorian Season 2, we'll see that before we see the Obi-Wan series. I'm assuming that Season 2 of this will premiere around the same time next year, just based on their production schedule. If you spotted any big Easter eggs or anything huge in the trailer that I didn't mention in the video, just write it below in the comments. But first episode coming November 12th, there might be some more promos and footage that drop before then. While you wait for everything, click here for my Star Wars Episode 9 trailer video and click here to learn all about the brand new Superman TV show that's coming next year. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.